Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today I am once again comparing the new GeForce GTX 1650 against the Radeon RX 570. And I know, I know, I'm kind of flogging a dead horse at this point, but this testing is going to be quite a bit different to the testing I've done previously. Now, because these are lower end graphics cards, they sell for between $100 and $150, so that's kind of, yeah, that's sort of entry level-ish. Anyway, because of that, I test them at 1080p, and I've done so previously using higher to ultra quality type settings. In fact, the only games that I haven't completely maxed out uh, include Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Metro Exodus. In most of the new games that I'm testing with currently, the RX 570 and GTX 1650 were good for over 60 FPS at 1080p using the ultra quality preset. That said, I know those of you with higher refresh rate monitors do like to keep the minimum FPS above 60. So I've retested both GPUs using the higher medium presets and I'm interested to see if this changes the margins. For example, will it favor one GPU more so than the other? So today we plan to find out. Please note that when changing a quality preset, the game was closed and then re-executed to make sure the changes were applied. So it was a very tedious process, but I was interested to see the results. So hopefully you guys will be as well. As usual, the standard GPU test rig has been used, which comprises of a Core i9 1900K clocked at five gigahertz with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3400 memory. And of course it is built inside the Corsair Crystal 570X. Okay, without wasting any more time, let's get into the results. First up, we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and here we see pretty similar scaling performance between the 1650 and RX 570. Dropping down to medium does seem like an appropriate quality preset for these GPUs and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, as it allowed us to average just over 60 FPS. Now, the Battlefield 5 results are really surprising, really strange even. I retested the 1650 a few times to try and work out what was going on here, but for whatever reason, I saw almost no performance uplift when downgrading the quality preset from ultra to high. Then from high to medium, the frame rates jumped by 23%. So there was clearly some changes being made, but it just wasn't as impactful as I would have expected. And this means whereas the GTX 1650 and RX 570 were comparable using the ultra quality preset, the RX 570 ran away with it when using the high and medium presets. Again, this is really strange. I'm not entirely sure if this is just a driver bug or if it's something more. Anyway, I will keep an eye on it. Preset scaling in Dirt Rally 2 was pretty standard, much like what we saw in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Here the performance margins remained very much the same between the RX 570 and GTX 1650. Moving on, we see much the same with The Division 2. The margins remained very similar using the ultra high and medium quality presets. Naturally, the frame rates did increase quite dramatically as we lowered the quality settings, but the margins remained much the same. And as a result, here the RX 570 was 27% faster across the board. The margins also remained very similar when testing with Far Cry New Dawn. Here the RX 570 was around 20% faster regardless of the quality preset used. The GTX 1650 does fare a little better in Forza Horizon 4 as we reduce the quality levels. Using the Ultra preset, the RX 570 was 26% faster. Then with the high quality preset, that margin is reduced to 21% and then 20% using medium. Not a massive difference, but the 1650 did come back a little. Like most of the games we've looked at so far, the margins remained much the same when testing with Fortnite. The 1% low performance for the 1650 does improve with the high preset, but then fell away once again with the medium preset. Metro Exodus, which is an Nvidia sponsored title, favors the Radeon GPU much more when using the high and medium quality presets. With the ultra settings enabled, the RX 570 was just 10% faster when comparing the four gigabyte models. However, that margin is extended to 26% with the high quality preset maintained with the medium quality settings. So basically the game becomes less game worksy once you lower the visual quality settings. The RX 570 enjoyed a 30% lead over the GTX 1650 in Resident Evil 2 when using the ultra quality settings. That margin though is reduced to 23% with the high and medium quality presets. When testing with Rainbow Six Siege, we see that the GTX 1650 and RX 570 are basically neck and neck when using the ultra quality preset. Speaking of which, I'd just like to note an error in my day one GTX 1650 review. I had the GTX 1650 beating the RX 570 in this title, but after a retest, that's not actually the case. The performance for all other Radeon GPUs, such as the RX 580 and 590 are correct. So I'm not sure what happened with the RX 570 in the original test. Anyway, that's been corrected now. And as you can see with the ultra quality preset, they're basically on par. 
Similar margins were seen when using the high quality preset, while the RX 570 does sneak away a little bit with the medium quality settings. The RX 570 and GTX 1650 are fairly well matched in Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the ultra quality preset enabled. However, once we drop down to the high preset, the Radeon GPU pulls ahead by an 18% margin. And we also see a similar margin to that when using the medium quality settings. Last up, we have World War Z, and this is another big win for the Radeon GPU. Here, the RX 570 was 38% faster with the ultra quality settings, and that margin was pretty well maintained with the high and medium quality presets as well. So no real changes there. With the exception of just a few oddities, the GTX 1615 RX 570 scaled very evenly across the range of tested presets. Now, the Battlefield 5 results, they were a bit bizarre. I suspect that's some kind of driver issue. Like I said, I retested a few times and the GTX 1650 uh, just continued to produce bizarre results there. So I'll keep an eye on that one. And then the only other game was Metro Exodus. And that one, uh, well, that one went in favor of the RX 570 with the high and medium quality settings opposed to the ultra quality settings that we normally test at. Overall though, as long as you're testing with more than just a few select games, the quality presets shouldn't have too much of an impact on your findings overall. So you should end up with pretty similar performance margins at the end of the day. I have seen a few people complain that these budget mid-range GPUs shouldn't be tested using high to ultra quality type settings, but as we've proven, for the most part, the margins don't change, so it won't impact the conclusion. Of course, performance does depend on the game. For example, the second highest preset in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, so not the highest preset, but dialing down to the second highest quality preset, that still saw us limited to about 40 FPS, somewhere in the mid 40s. But then you take Far Cry New Dawn, Forza Horizon 4, Resident Evil 2, Rainbow Six Siege, and World War Z, for example, all of those pumped out over 70 FPS on average using the maximum in-game quality preset. So I feel using lower quality settings with graphics cards of this caliber really isn't necessary. As I said, in a lot of the games, these cards were pushing over 60 FPS, so that is obviously plenty of frames. And by using the high to ultra quality presets, we do uh, basically push them to their limits. So if there's a card with a limited VRAM buffer, that'll show some issues there. And basically that indicates that the card may not be a great investment because if it's struggling now, it's certainly not gonna be particularly handy in six to 12 months time. Something else I haven't really made mention of is the fact that both the four and eight gigabyte versions of the RX 570 were included in this testing. And with the exception of a few ultra quality tests, we saw no real difference in performance between the two and they were matched at the same clock speeds. Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Shadow of the Tomb Raider saw small performance gains when using the ultra quality presets, but beyond that, all other tests were within the margin of error. So I wouldn't go paying too much of a premium for that extra VRAM, but if it's only, I don't know, 10 to $20 more, then yeah, get the extra memory because it will come in handy down the track. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. Hope you did enjoy this benchmark video. If you did, hit the like button, uh, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate the work we do at Horrorbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.